Greetings, I am Avis, and today, instead of our normally scheduled programming, we're going to have something a little more unscripted to celebrate the fact that we've reached 40 patrons on Patreon and to celebrate the new year. So, we're going to have a little question and answer with questions submitted by my Discord community. I'd just like to thank everyone for helping me get to where I am today, and hopefully we'll keep on supporting each other. And hopefully this little question and answer segment will help you all understand and relate to me a bit more so that I am not merely a disembodied voice in the void. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Question 1. What inspired you to do hypnosis? Well, I've been interested in hypnosis since I was about 13, 14, and I'm 19 now, so I've always been interested in it. In terms of what inspired me to actually take the plunge and start doing files and acting in the more dominant role, I'd say the quarantine gave me a lot of time, free time, to do absolutely nothing. And I was seeing a distinct lack of things that appealed to me or just appealed in general in the hypnosis community. Lots of poor quality recordings, bad writing, weird, unappealing ideas. So I said to myself, I can do this, and I can do it, arguably, better than a lot of people who are doing it now. And I would like to help the community and help people in any way that I can by offering my skills and talents. Question 2. Where do you draw inspiration when you're stuck? When I'm stuck writing a file or I can't quite think of an idea to execute on, what I'll usually do is wait. I will take some time away from it, or I will try and fruitlessly force myself to write. But when it comes to me, it comes to me. And once I get started, I will just keep going. I just need to get that momentum started. Something that does help me get that momentum up and running is going out on walks. Very late walks, like three o'clock in the morning when no one's around and just the cool air and the moon and the stars. It allows me to calm my mind and dig through it and work through the idea and look for inspiration. Question three. When you're not making content, what do you do? Well, I should be in school, but I am taking a small gap year due to unforeseen circumstances. Um, I do a lot of reading. I do Dungeons and Dragons. I play video games. I talk, listen to music, listen to podcasts. I listen to a lot of really wonderful podcasts. So that kind of helps me occupy my time when I'm not making content. But as of late, especially because of Patreon paying off and because I've gotten a lot of commissions, there are not many times when I'm not thinking about content. I'm always thinking about either the commission that I am slated to do at the moment or potential ideas that I want to do in the future. 
Question 4. What are your personal goals as a hypnotist and artist slash content creator? This is an interesting question for me because I don't really have any concrete goals. I suppose my goal is the same as the goal of every single artist and content creator, which is to hone my craft, to spread it to more and more people. In terms of, say, more concrete examples, I would like my work, my hypnosis, my files, to be helpful to unlock and unleash the potential of the people who listen to it. And I would say, and this might be a bit... <laughs> this might be an ill-advised thing to say, but I would love if I could reach the level of some of the other hypnotists in the community. I'm talking about Vive and Ninja and Jack Stock and Jack Drago, those guys, because in many respects, they are inspirations to me. I based a lot of my early hypnosis exploration on their files and their creations. So it would be wonderful if I could count them among my peers. So I suppose that could be counted as a personal goal of mine. Question five. What other area of hypnosis would you like to explore in 2021? I would, of course, love to improve and expand and work on the areas that I've already delved into, mostly jock and muscle files, because I do have a very soft spot in my heart for those kinds of works. But I would also love to do two things. One, I'd like to do some experimental files that no one else has done. I'd like to take inspiration from places other than the general kinks and fetishes that fuel most of the hypnosis community to make something unique. Secondly, I would enjoy if I could find a niche exploring other archetypes besides the jock bodybuilder alpha male kind of thing. Um, so, for example, I can't even think of an example, but I, I'd really love to hear and see what other archetypes and stereotypes and ideas and transformations people come to me with, either through commissions or suggestions for Patreon polls, or just come to my mind through inspiration. But we shall see what 2021 holds for not only myself, but for all of us. Question 6. What is it about hypnosis that most appeals to you? The thing about hypnosis that most appeals to me is that aspect of transformation. Transformation, change, augmentation, manipulation, all of those things are so intense and so evocative in their meaning and in the various ways that they can manifest themselves. Transformation is really a key to my entire philosophy about life. Constant improvement or changing yourself, rebranding yourself, making yourself better, or if not better, then at least different, to experience a more vivid, rich, and varied um, view of life and the world. Additionally, I would have to say that transformation as 
kink transformation as erotic praxis, if you want to call it that way, is incredibly fascinating. It is incredibly engaging. And the potential for growth, the potential for transformation, you'll notice, is a very common thread throughout most of my files. Even files that are mainly supposed to be experiences such as Villainous Corruption or the Winter King series, those contain within them small little segments of transformative bliss. Question 7. What would you say is your greatest creation yet, both file and subject? Choosing a greatest creation is incredibly difficult for myself because I love and put care into every single file that I make. It's very easy to say that I have a least favorite file of mine. It's very easy to criticize yourself in that way. And also there are just commission topics that I flat out did not like. But I would say there are candidates for my top files. Something like Lust for Growth, for example, definitely makes it up there. Um, muscle Pup, Toxic Douchebag Alpha. These files that are not often seen in the community and that are longer and that I have put a lot more work into definitely always come out on top. But even other things like even like the intellect drain file, because I had not worked with the dumbing down exclusively before, that was incredibly fun to create. Absolute Honesty, which is a Patreon exclusive, was um, revealing for me in the different ways that you could tackle a subject. So I don't think I have a greatest creation yet. I have a lot of really good creation. And the greatness of a particular file is usually dependent on how my subjects and how the people who listen to my files respond to them and how they react and change and get results from them. So for example, Toxic Douchebag has had some intense, insane, crazy transformations, complete 180s of your mental reality kind of transformation. And Lust for Growth also is amazing in the way that it has motivated lots and lots of people to finally go out there and work. Even the Winter King files, the way that they can relax, the way that they soothe people, really makes me happy. I don't, once again, it's very difficult for me to pick favorites. I don't have a greatest subject, to my knowledge yet, because I have a lot of people who come to me, I have a lot of people who work with me, and I, I definitely have a list in my mind of different subjects who I vibe well with and who have clearly benefited from my transformations. So instead of talking about my greatest creation, my greatest subject, I'm going to talk about a subject that looms large in my mind in regards to the sheer extremeness of their transformation. So this subject came to me about mid-July of 2020, I think around there, maybe a bit earlier in the year. But we instantly hit it off. He had found me from my first file. I think it was Alpha Muscle God. And he vibed with it so well. No, no, no. 
It wasn't Alpha Muscle God. It was, you are a meathead. Uh, he had vibed with that file so well. And he came to me and we really hit it off. We had a lot of things in common. Both of us were people of color. Both of us bisexual. Both of us are academics um, in different capacities. And, and we would just talk. We would talk and he'd occasionally listen to my files and come back to me and explain um, how he felt. His experiences were fi with files were very vivid. His experiences were intense and they were long lasting, the effects that he saw. Um, he told me once that he felt it was due to the fact that he was on the autism spectrum and that the way that my files were constructed really allowed him to absorb and kind of tune off that neurodivergence um, to make it work for him as opposed to against him as he sometimes had to do. And after a little while, we began exploring darker themes and topics, more niche, more intense in terms of his own personal psychology and the way that his mind worked. And he was actually the person who helped me come up with the ideas and the themes present in the toxic douchebag file. He was already a bodybuilder. He was very good looking, very handsome. I remember seeing him the first time and being absolutely blown away. And he wanted more. He honestly was longing for change in any direction. And the direction that we both agreed was probably the most interesting and most extreme for him would have been in the direction of an absolute beast, monstrous, toxic, arrogant, full of himself, powerful, in a way that he never really had been. He was a really sweet, gentle, soft sociology student, and he had never really taken the, the chance or the opportunity to fully embody the theme that we were discussing. So, it took a while. Um, I think Toxic Douchebag was the first file that I had recorded with my new microphone setup. So he was on the cutting edge of my bump in quality. And he listened to it the first time. And it was like a, a switch had flipped in his mind and he was never the same after that he went from being a really sweet lovely guy but a total pushover he he used to let people just walk all over him but after working with me and my files he was assertive, he was strong, he was dominant and aggressive, maybe not in the best ways, but he certainly was not suffering from the same kinds of depression that he was experiencing before coming to me. And he told me on multiple occasions that the transformations he was going through, they were the happiest he had been in a long time. They really opened his eyes. So that experience, that subject, has always been in the back of my mind. I've wanted to write stories about him, but I just can't quite put that whole experience into words. Unfortunately, however, for a little while, he went off the grid. I couldn't contact him. It seemed like he'd ghosted me. And that made me really, really sad because we genuinely become really good friends and confidants and we used to talk all the time. And so losing a friend like that, especially because 
all of this is online and you have no concrete physical connection to people, it, it happens more often and it it is painful in a wistful sense of longing and loss. Um, it, it was like two months, two, two and a half months without hearing anything from him. Then he popped up again and he said that he'd been going through some stuff and he had to take a break and we got talking again. And then again, he just disappeared. And I think about him all the time and I really wish that we could reconnect. Um, but I think that is one of my best experiences with a subject. Uh, question eight. Will you ever do a muscle slash jock slash meathead file that doesn't try to turn the listener into an arrogant douche slash prick? Now, I included this question for several reasons. First, because I get asked this kind of thing a lot. Um, surprisingly, honestly. And I'm just going to use this platform as a place to say I have. I have quite a few files where that kind of language, that kind of theme and subject matter and suggestion is not even mentioned. Um, there is the Bull Bro file, which is a Patreon exclusive. You are a meathead. Both you are a bro files. I'd argue the first jock perfection file. And then the pure muscle files like uh, lust for growth, muscle obsession, workout motivation, muscle bull, that kind of thing. So I have 100% made files that have in no way, shape, or form the desire to turn the listener into an arrogant douche slash prick. But also in a wider sense, I get asked a lot. Why do you make these kinds of files? Why do you have this consistent theme and through line of making people so aggressive and dominant and arrogant and full of themselves? And it is because that niche in hypnosis and in wider society is not present. And it's rather unfortunate because a lot of people could really benefit from becoming a bit more of a douchebag. I'm, I'm sorry, a lot of people have not had the chance to experience that flowing rush of arrogance and cockiness. And I think it's something that more people should indulge in, especially people who are interested in the jock and muscle archetypes, because that kind of arrogance, that kind of pride and confidence and self-assurance adds an extra factor in your journey. It adds the self-confidence and the um, uninhibitedness that is required to fully take the next step and to properly transform yourself. And then also there's the fact that I just have a thing for arrogance and cockiness and I enjoy writing it. I enjoy the effect it has on people. It's incredibly fun to watch people get into themselves and truly love themselves in a way that is not commonly accepted in society, but I think should maybe be more commonly accepted in lots of different places. And the fact that absolute humility is necessary really doesn't sit well with me, because whether they want to admit it or not, a lot of people are attracted to arrogance and cockiness. Maybe differing amounts and values, but it's there. 
Additionally, I would like it to be said that unless you are paying me or unless you are a Patreon subscriber, unless you are a subject that I have worked with for a while and that I know and that I trust, I have no obligation to change and cater and um, adjust my content and my output to suit you. If you're not into something that I'm creating, you can wait for the next file or you can go to someone else to find what you want. There's no shame in that. I'm not the jealous type and I'm not going to tell you no. I'm not going to say stick around, please, please, like me, like me for what I'm creating. I'm simply not. Um, but additionally, I believe that this theme of arrogance and cockiness and confidence is not well explored in hypnosis because of the fact that many hypnotists and many file makers approach it from a sub-dom perspective. They automatically approach and assume that the relationship between a hypnotist and a subject has to be one where the hypnotist is dominant and the subject is submissive. And any suggestions contrary to that fact upset the paradigm and contradict the hypnotist's authority and they risk losing control of their subject. I personally do not view hypnosis in that way. I see it more as experimentation. A scientist or an expert working on a, a subject or an artist painting a picture. There is no inherent power dynamic. There is a trust dynamic, certainly, because you need to be able to trust your hypnotist and trust your dominant and trust your file maker with your own consciousness and your mind. But, as I said before, if you're not into arrogance, if you're not into confidence, I have other files that appeal to different sensibilities. And if you don't like my files, you can suggest ways that I can improve my content or you can go away. Question nine. How far would you be willing to change someone through hypnosis? This is an interesting question because on a deeper sense, it asks, what is the responsibility of a hypnotist to curb the desires and wants of their subject? Is it a good idea to encourage potentially self-destructive behaviors and ideas and suggestions in a subject? And I'm going to say something that might be controversial, which is, I will go as far as will make the subject comfortable. And I will go as far as will make me comfortable. I tend to have very few limitations. I do not have many thresholds for discomfort so I can go as far as most people want. But I recognize it's not for everyone. And I do not believe that it is my place, or the place of anyone really, to curb those desires as long as those desires are not going to hurt anyone else. I recall a kind of legal precedent, which is that 
your freedom, your freedom to flail your arms, ends at another person's nose. So, as long as someone is willing to change themselves, it might not be in a way that I find is tasteful or good or necessary or even healthy, but if they are going to commission a file from me or we have a rapport already with a hypnotic relationship and they want something more from me, then I'm going to do it for them. I'm not going to tell them no because of my own moral qualms and philosophical positions. I'm not your dad. I can't tell you what to do outside of trance. Question 10. What do you need slash want from us, if anything? I don't need anything, really. I definitely have things that I would ask my audience uh, to do, though. One of those things is to come and talk to me, to share your experiences. I genuinely love to hear and read about testimonials, about my files, um, to understand the ways in which you've seen effects, the changes you've seen, the transformations you've undergone, the stories you've experienced while using my files. And some of you already know, I do actively take some stories um, from my subjects and I use them as models. I always ask permission though. And I, I write about them and I post them on Tumblr and those stories sometimes get a lot of notes because they're very interesting. Testimonials about hypnotic transformation are inherently fascinating. Another thing I would ask of everyone is to spread my files, to talk them up, to share them on forums or on Tumblr or on Twitter or wherever the case may be, because it's only through networking and word of mouth that you can really expect to grow and improve a enterprise, an enterprise, let's call this. So if you all could help me in sharing my stuff, my files or my channel or my stories with friends or communities that you know would appreciate my kind of work, that would appreciate the transformation, or even people who have not yet tried hypnosis but are curious about it, or who have a particular leaning towards, say, muscle growth and personality change, or, or relaxation, or, or what have you, then I would ask that you all share. Of course, I would always ask that people join the Patreon, support me monetarily, but that's not necessary if you can't afford it. I recognize times are hard, things are rough, not everyone can pay for such luxuries. So, just your ongoing support, your continued attendance to my files, your participation in the community. Question 11. What was your first experience with hypnosis like? My first experience with hypnosis came about because of my interest, let's call it, in muscle and muscle growth and that kind of kink scene, the whole role play, inflation, well not necessarily inflation, but like you know what I'm talking about. And it came about at a point in time that must have been about when I was 13, 12, around there, and I was incredibly uncomfortable with my body. Still am, honestly. 
but that was at a point in time where I was uncomfortable with my body and I was looking for any and every shortcut. And one of the things that I found, my first proper hypnosis file that I found was actually Jack Stock's muscle growth file. And that file is a fascinating piece of work because it's really well constructed. It's very well produced and it has a lot of layers to it. But what it essentially boils down to is an experience. And I had really good results with that experience. And it started me off on a journey, a, a rabbit hole that I've been digging through off and on in, for the past seven years, six, seven. So that was what my first experience was like. It was slow. Um, it was slow, and I could definitely feel things. It was a very physical experience because the file itself describes um, growth, and it is very good at that description. And it really makes you forget about the world around you. It makes you hyper-focus on your body, which is something that not many hypnosis files do, and which I attempt to emulate in my own style. Question 12. What are some of your favorite books, music, movies, TV shows? I am not the kind of person that has favorite anything. I... I have a hard time even choosing favorite colors. But in terms of media, and in terms of the things that I do and consume, I have things that I have really liked in the past, and I have things that are on my mind at the moment. So instead of describing an absolute favorite, I will try to describe some things that are on my mind in these genres and these media that are current. So, the current book that I'm working through, books at the moment that I'm working through, because I am an avid reader, I have a very extensive library, is A Mouthful of Blood by Toni Morrison, which is a collection of essays, speeches, um, articles, which discuss, which are written by the eminent author, Toni Morrison, may she rest in peace, uh, which discuss a whole range of social and literary and political topics, race and gender and sexuality and colonialism, all in this beautifully written book. Another thing that I'm reading at the moment is Dark Wings of Cthulhu, Volume 4, which is an anthology series of different Lovecraftian writings edited by S.T. Joshi. Very good stories in there, um, some of which I might use for inspiration for files later on, who knows. My current playlist, or the most recent things on my playlist in terms of music, have been Eartha Kitt and Ella Fitzgerald and Tally Hall, and Philip Glass. In terms of musical tastes, I have incredibly eclectic tastes. They come from all over the place, and they are wildly inconsistent. I like Celtic woman, folk songs, traditional music from other cultures. I like... Um, jazz, bluegrass, classical music, all kinds of things. So many different things. Um, I could definitely talk your air off about all the different kinds of music that I've been listening to at the moment. Musicals, I love a musical. Um, Hades Town has been 
a staple on my playlist for a while. Um, I do not watch many movies or TV shows very often. Occasionally, I'll sit down and watch a comedy. At the moment, I'm trying to get through 30 Rock. Um, instead, what I mostly listen to are podcasts. Um, I love podcasts. Podcasts are wonderful. Um, I'm actually a voice actor in a podcast called Station Arcadia. Not a very big bit yet. Um, more episodes with me are coming out, but if you like science fiction and you like explorations of different societies and stories, then I definitely recommend you check Station Arcadia out. Some other podcasts that I've been listening to at the moment, The Oyster, which is another science fiction podcast, um, Stella Firma, My Brother, My Brother and Me, Sawbones, Malcolm Gladwell's Revisionist History, those kinds of things. I have a wide range of taste in the things that I consume. Question 13. Why did you pick the username Avis Sapiens? There's a bit of a story to this username. So, when I was younger, I started off with the username Ravenswood. This channel used to be called Ravenswood38. Um, if you go back into my YouTube catalog, you'll see some very old, slightly embarrassing Skyrim book readings where I introduce myself as Raven, um, your faithful Raven. Um, so it started off as Ravenswood, and when I was about 14, 15, I got involved in an interesting community um, that was mostly involved in strange things. Let's call it the study of the occult. And from that point, I called myself Avis Negress, which is Blackbird. And then something happened, which was that I, in, in trying to get more into certain occult themes, I had been reading about the alchemical ideal of the Bird of Hermes and the Hermetic Secret Societies, so I decided to brand myself as Avis Sapiens, which is Latin for wise bird. I've kept this username for a while now, and I'm probably not going to change it because you don't see it anywhere else. Question 14. Do you have a voice care routine? How did you get such a cool one? How can I steal it? I am afraid that if you want to steal my voice, you will have to do it over my cold, dead body. My voice is, at the moment, my most powerful tool. In terms of voice care, I don't do anything particularly strong, except before I record. Before I record, you cannot have anything sweet, no dairy products, no... Um, nothing too hot or juicy, nothing too hot, try not to eat anything too big, because that messes up the sound of your voice. In terms of long-term care, I recommend drinking a lot of water. Always hydrate yourself, but that's a general rule for life. Um, in terms of how I got such a cool one, puberty definitely has a role to play, but additionally, I am a debater, I am a public speaker, and I have done a fair bit of training to project my voice and to 
hone it down for when I am speaking and performing in a way that will be engaging and enticing. Question 15. How has your life changed since becoming a professional hypnotist? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, first, I would hold contention that I am a professional anything. I don't really make enough for this to be my profession, but I see what you mean. It has been overwhelmingly positive. I have gotten to meet so many amazing people, work with so many wonderful subjects, to find a way to spend my time in a way that is productive and creative. It has definitely allowed me to explore different aspects of myself that I had not previously fully reconciled with myself. I genuinely love so many of my subjects. They are wonderful friends. I talk to them almost daily. I've met great people. That's a massive plus. And of course, Patreon support, being able to have a little bit of pocket change to buy my own stuff. That is very nice. It's lovely. Uh, otherwise, I would have no money. Money is nice. Um, the only bad or ugly thing is perhaps I have gotten, arguably, a little too numbers-oriented. But this is a trap that anyone who is creating, especially on the internet, and especially for commission work or the gig economy, that they fall into. You kind of get absorbed by the numbers. How many notes am I pulling in on Tumblr? How many people are downloading my files on Warp My Mind? How many Patreon subscribers have I lost or gained? How much money am I making every month? How many views on YouTube? And it's probably not the best for my mental health and well-being to attach so much self-worth to numerical values. But it kind of comes with the territory. In order to grow yourself and your brand, you have to monitor your numbers and your growth. So, ultimately, being a professional, quote-unquote, professional hypnotist, has changed my life so much for the better. And I'm going to keep working at it. I'm going to keep changing. I'm going to keep improving on my work. And I hope that all of you can be there for me and with me as I go along this journey. And I hope more and more of you will come to support me, more and more of you will indulge in the files and offerings that I have. 2021 is hopefully looking to be a better year than the last one. I'm not making any promises, but you have to maintain hope regardless. I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. I would like to thank my Discord community, all of the people who have been there for me from the start, um, my friends who support my hypnotic experimentation. All of it has been wonderful. It's been a, an affirming and life-defining experience. The skills that I've gained from this and the people that I've helped will stay with me for the rest of my life. So, I... I'm quite happy that I've done this video, and I hope you all enjoyed. I hope it gave you a bit more of an insight into Avis Sapien, so that I am not just a, a faceless, blank voice in the abyss. Um, as always, I'm going to plug my different socials. 
You can find a lot of my files on Tumblr. You can find my creative writing, my hypnosis creative writing on Tumblr. You can find most of my files on YouTube. And you should definitely consider becoming a Patreon supporter. I have lots of exclusive files and you get access to a lot of perks. Like if you join at the $10 level, you can read the scripts for a lot of my files or you can suggest ideas for the next um, poll that we have when I'm not doing commissions. So, uh, once again, I'd like to thank you all. I hope this was not too rambling and disconnected and all over the place. Definitely tell me if you've enjoyed it. Um, so, goodbye, everyone. Have a nice evening.